Hi weaving friends, today we're going to be talking about weaving as art. I'm going to be showing you a couple of ways that you can display your weaving as art to give you some ideas of even more things that you can do with your finished woven pieces. Today I happen to be wearing what I think, I'm pretty sure, is only the second scarf that I ever wove on my rigid heddle loom. So I thought I would just pop that on today for a little bit of fun. It still looks great after all these years. And I'm actually drinking coffee. I should be probably drinking herbal tea or water or something like that. I do have some water over there, but today I just feel like I need coffee. This is my Overshot mug, coffee mug. This is from my Society6 merchandise store. It's a little bit confusing. I have two merchandise stores and you probably think, well, why would you have two? It's because they both have different products and I really like both of the products that each of them have. So Society6 has these really good 15 ounce coffee mugs. And if you're like me, you really appreciate a 15 ounce coffee mug. They also have smaller 11 ounce coffee mugs. Uh, but my other merchandise store only has the smaller coffee mugs. I'll leave the links to my stores down below if you're interested in having a look. One way that I've found that is really effective for being able to show your woven pieces on a wall using quilt hangers. I've got an example of that right here. This is a Croak Broad piece that is from my Croak Broad 101 online class. That'll be linked down below as well. But I've got this cute little quilt hanger here. You can get them in all different sizes um, depending on whether you've got a mini quilt or a really big bed size quilt. And they're a really nice way to display quilts and they usually have these ornate tops which are really lovely as well. And so if you're lucky enough to find a good variety of these you can often choose a top that kind of suits the theme of your piece if that's something that you want to do. Um, or otherwise you can get a more plain looking one, but they're a really good idea. So for this particular piece, uh, because it's croak broad, it's really lends itself very well to hanging on a wall because it's quite heavy and thick. And all I did to actually hang it on this hanger, it's got this little roll here, is just to turn the fabric over and if you turn it over, you can see just a little tiny seam there that I just hand sewed. So I basically wove a bit of extra fabric at the top of the piece, bent that over the roller and hand sewed it. Very easy and simple way to do it. That's not specifically what I'm gonna be talking about today, but that's just one other option that I think is really lovely. So the option that I'm mainly going to be looking at today is framing. And I found this frame at an op shop. It was about $2. So if you're looking for frames for your work, check out your op shops or your thrift stores first, because if I bought this new, it would probably be, I don't know, $30 or something as opposed to the $2 that I got it for. And this one came in its wrapping, so it was all in plastic wrapping, nothing's been damaged. And I really like the idea of this circle cutout. Now, if you couldn't find a frame like this, and I did actually have a look on Amazon earlier today to see whether I could see anything that was either exactly the same or similar to this. And I don't know whether I was using the incorrect phrases or terminology you know how phrases can change from country to country, but I couldn't find any frames exactly like this. But this one is basically sold as a art craft frame and it says to suit all tapestries and embroideries. The idea of this one is it's got the mat and the circle cut out and it's also got the backing on it. It came with a little wire and um, hooks if you want to in case you want to hang it up on the wall as well I'm probably just going to be sitting mine on a ledge I think but it doesn't come or at least this one didn't come with a glass cover which is purposeful because if you've got something like an embroidery or a tapestry there's usually a bit of texture involved 
certainly a bit of thickness involved. And with an embroidery, you're definitely going to have little raised areas. You don't want glass pressing down straight on that. Now, while I was on Amazon earlier, I did find a bunch of different frames and I thought another really good option for framing your weaving would be the box frames. Now they're frames that have like a bit of a built up frame at the sides and where the work sits is kind of at the back of the frame. And so it's kind of recessed in the frame. They are often sold for craft projects for um, any kind of work that is raised up, say stump work, embroidery, things like that. And they will often have a glass front on it, but it's fine to have the glass front because it doesn't touch the work because you've got that extra room, hence the name box frame. So I'm going to leave some links down below for possible frames that you could look at. But as I said, Always go looking at your thrift store first um, and you may find something that's really suitable. The first thing I did in thinking about this frame, I have had this frame sitting around for a little while, not knowing exactly what to do with it. But another thing that I have sitting around in my studio is tons and tons of samples, woven samples. And a lot of these are from classes that I've done. And so I need to kind of keep the samples as a reference point, especially if, well, not just for me, but for students as well, so that I can look back at my samples and um, help students if they need help with different areas. So then I'm left with a lot of these samples, which are very good and very valuable, but I'm not always sure what to do with them. So for example, this one, just kind of hangs from a bookshelf because I particularly like it. This one here has been folded up um, on a shelf sitting around. This one has been folded away in a box and I have a huge box full of samples, full to overflowing. In fact, I need another box. Um, and so I just have all of these samples. So. A lot of them are really very pretty and very attractive. I actually love samples because I get different patterns in different colors and they can often just look really great and really striking. The only thing with some of these samples, these two in particular that are overshot is they're both woven in wool and I didn't want something that was too thick for this frame because whatever's going in the frame has to go between the mat board and the backing board. So something too thick would kind of push the mat board forward and wouldn't look very attractive and wouldn't be good for the frame either because it'd be pushing it unnaturally. So my next thought was, okay, I could use something like one of these pieces that I did in my art cloth workshop class where we wove the fabric and then we used all kinds of lovely paints and dyes and things to print and make really unique fabric. I thought this would be just perfect, but guess what? <laughs> when you look at the frame, it's just a bit too small. So then I started thinking about, well, if I wanted it to you know, fit the circle a little bit more, maybe I could sew this onto some other backing, some other sample or something like that. And then that would be like, you know, make sure that it's a whole piece of fabric that's big enough to go in that circle. But I, I didn't like that idea because I thought if I could have a circle or a frame that was just big enough to go around this, that'd be perfect and I would love that. But that's not what has happened. So that kind of ruined my vision a little bit. I was also aware that any seams, if I sewed extra fabric, any seams would create extra bulk. So that one was out, but I, I'll keep an eye out for a different kind of a frame, something a little bit smaller for this one. Then I thought, okay, I'm gonna get out all my croque broad samples because I have so many. Because as you know, I have a class and I have, a lot of videos here on YouTube that show you how to do croak broad. So these are great, very striking, very bold, and 
I like the idea of having a striking bold piece in a frame, but again, none of them quite fit the space. So this one, too narrow, and this one's really thick as well. And these two are too narrow as well. And then I thought of, again, I thought of kind of, you know, joining pieces or doing something like that. And I just thought, no, I can't do that. There's too much thickness there. So that one went out. Um, then I thought of, I've got this really lovely crackle weave piece. This was done with really, really fine merino warp and then a variety of some fine and some thicker wefts. Um, and I got a lot of really pretty, really pretty patterns out of that. Um, two problems with this one, again, not quite thick enough to fit the circle. And also this sample had a threading error running right through the middle. And because it was just a sample, I thought I'm not gonna fix that. I can't be bothered, it's okay, I can live with it. But I know that if I put this in a frame, even if I could make it work with the size, I would be forever looking at that fault going through the middle. It's just immediately what my eye is attracted to. It's my fault, I should have fixed it when I had the chance and I didn't. Anyway, so that piece is out. Then I thought of my monk's belt samplers. Again, got some gorgeous monk's belt samplers and they are really bold, beautiful, colorful patterns. Again, just didn't have that right size. I think something like this, this piece here, if it was the full size, it would just be wonderful. But, or that one, that would look so good in a frame. But no, it was not meant to be. So that leaves me with two more pieces. And I have a lot more samplers, believe me, but I only selected the ones that I thought would be most suitable for this particular job. So I've got this um, summer and winter sampler and I thought maybe that one could go in. So I'm gonna give that a try. It's a good thickness, it's not too thick, it's quite a thin fabric, it's got a nice bold pattern. Um, the only thing with this one is, you can see the, the motifs, it would be hard to get them matched up in the middle. I don't know, would it? I'll see, I'm gonna test it and I'm gonna see. Because I do wanna have that balance, um, I don't wanna just put things in willy-nilly, it's gotta be some sort of balanced look to it. Uh, maybe a little bit of symmetry is what I'm talking about. Anyway, we'll have a look at that in just a moment. I am going to test that one out. And then the last one I want to test out is this beautiful piece. Um, this has two sides and you, you have to see both sides to really appreciate it, I think. So this is the side where you can see mostly the weft with all those lovely colours. So it's a, a thicker woolen weft on a hmm, cotton, I'm sure it's cotton, A2 cotton uh, background. And then I'll flip it over and you can see the designs again. They look really cool on this side too. I don't even know which side I like better. They're both so nice. So this piece is from years and years ago not long after I got my David floor loom, which is um, six or seven years ago now. And I wove this piece. Um, I had just got Nancy Hoskins weft faced pattern weaves book. And I was really excited because this is really an awesome book. It's not a beginner's book. Okay, I have to say that when I first got it and I hadn't had my floor loom for very long, I was like, what have I done? This book is crazy. But all these years later, I still think it's crazy, but I think it's crazy good because it has so many different things to try in there. I mean, they're all weft faced weaves, but it shows you how expansive that category can actually be. Um, so I've woven a couple of samples from this book. I haven't delved into it nearly enough that I would like to at some point. 
it's a great book. I really recommend it. Um, so these patterns are from that book. And I believe, oh, I'm not sure, but I believe I did these on six shafts um, on a rose path threading. But I am terribly disorganized. I didn't write down all the patterns and everything that I use. So I'm left all this time later guessing what on earth I did. Anyway, I'll stop blabbering about that and we'll have a look at how these two quite different pieces look in the frame. First thing I wanna do is clear away all of these samplers that just did not make it. And I'm gonna turn the frame over. It's just like an ordinary picture frame on the back. It's got these little pieces of metal that you press in or out to get the backing board in or out. Okay, so I'll take the backing board out for a moment and then it's got these instructions inside and then it's just got the circle like so. So to test out how things are going to look, I can just lay my fabric in there. Obviously, whichever one I choose, I'm going to have to cut it to size a little bit more. And then I'm actually going to lace it onto the backing board. But um, I'll show you more about that when we get to it. I have to make a decision first. So I'll try and line these up somewhere in the middle. Hmm. Try it about there. And I do like the blue side a little bit better. I really like the white side as well, but I think the blue side's more striking when you're talking about putting something in a frame. So then I'll just pop the backing board back in place for a moment and um, pop these ones out of the way just so that we can get an idea of how that's going to look. Well, I didn't get it quite in the middle, did I? I could adjust that a little bit more um, and have the, have the design a little bit more centered. That's not too bad, it's almost there. Um, and then the thing is, another thing with this design is you can see more of the finished design at the bottom than at the top. And that's because I don't have a complete finish of the design at the top. So that's a little bit interesting. Okay, I like it. I do like it, but I'm not sure. So I'm gonna put it down and I'm going to try the other piece in its place. So I'll take that board out again. Now I have to look at this piece and think which part would I like to be looking at in a picture frame? And really hard to decide. Mm -hmm. I think I like this really black bold part here. So we'll have a look at how that looks in the frame first. And I don't mind at all if there's other colors showing. Now, this piece doesn't quite fit the frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the paper from the instructions and I'm just gonna put that at the sides so that at the sides where you can't, where the piece doesn't quite reach to the edges of the circle. Um, so you can't see backing board. It's better to see white than to see backing board. All right, let's have a look at how that comes up in the frame. What do you think of that one? I quite like it. What I'm gonna do is there's a mirror behind me. So I can see this in the screen of the camera, but um, I think that I can see it better if I'm having a look in the mirror. So I'm gonna hold it up to the mirror and see what I think of that. Yeah, I can see it ever so much better in the mirror. And I like it. I do like it. Um, I like it more than the summer and winter in the frame. So I think we have ourselves a contender. What I might do is just to try another section. 
So I'll take the backing board out again and yeah, just try another section because this piece is so varied. Um, I can try all different sections in there and see what looks best. All right, let's have a look at that one. That's another possibility. Again, I'm gonna to go to my mirror. No, I definitely like the black part that I had in there before. This is still really nice, but I prefer the black. So now that I've decided, I have to do a little bit of fiddling about in a few different ways. Firstly, I'm gonna make sure that the placement is right. So to see exactly which part of the cloth I need um, in order for it to look a certain way, the way that I want it to. So I'll turn that over again. And yeah, so I wanna make sure that everything's kind of straight and that the parts of the design that I want to show most are showing. So this little bit at the top right here, um, it's kind of a greenish color and I don't like the way those floats look. So what I wanna do is bring the whole design up a little bit so that it's showing more of the bottom part of the design. So this is just mucking around to get the right placement before I actually cut or separate anything. So that was that green there and I'm gonna just take that down so that the green section, which is this part here, is eliminated. Then I will try again to see how it looks. If you're gonna be cutting your pieces up, it's not something that you wanna get wrong that you end up with the wrong part of the design or that you cut off too much or whatever happens. So it's worth taking a bit of extra time to make sure that's better. So now I've got, I'm having trouble keeping it in place because the fabric's really thick in some places, but the places that I want to display, the fabric's not so thick. It's just these other pieces, they're gonna be gone. They're gonna be cut up. So although it doesn't quite meet the circle at the sides, I'm not too fussed about that because I think it looks okay with the white background and I'm, I'm happy enough with that. All right, so the next thing I need to do is I need to make this fabric taut. At the moment, can you see how it's moving? Because it's just a, a flat piece of fabric on a, a piece of backing board. So I need to make it taut so it's gonna stay still. I've even got some little bumps up here and ripples and that doesn't look so good in a frame so I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to just put the frame aside for a minute and the piece of paper and I want to make sure that I've really determined which parts of the fabric I need or don't need. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut at the top and the bottom, and I'm going to give myself a little bit of extra fabric. So even though I said I don't want this green part in the piece, well, it's not gonna be in the piece because this circle is going to be covering it at the top. But I need that extra bit of fabric in the piece because I'm gonna lace the fabric at the back. So double check how much fabric I do need. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut at the top here. And then at the bottom, I'm gonna cut between this green. I'll just use that as a mark. Right there. I 
Okay, so this is my piece that's going to be showing in the circle of the frame. And what I'm going to do now is to protect my fabric, I'm going to serge these edges. And I'm also going to serge the edges of the pieces that I cut off because I still want to keep these. I'm not going to throw these out or get rid of them or anything because they're my reference points for when I go back to doing this kind of work again. If I leave that, it's going to be okay for a while, but eventually it's probably going to unravel and I just want to have that protection for them. So that's my next job is to serge all three of these pieces. All the pieces are now safely surged. So the next thing that I need is some good strong thread and I'm going to double this thread so I'm going to get quite a bit off and then just a sewing needle and thread it up. This is the challenge to thread it without having my glasses on. There we go. I've still got it just. <laughs> there are times where I just cannot thread the needle. All right and then I'm going to double that up. So what I'm doing now, it, this is known as lacing and I'm not going to do the professional proper technique of lacing. I'm just going to get the job done basically. So I'm going to do a, a big knot at the end there because I don't want that pulling through my fabric. All right, hopefully that knot is big enough. And then once more, I want to, you could also press your piece if you wanted to, if you thought that it needed pressing. So I want to start at one end. Now, normally if you were lacing onto a board like this to put it in a frame, you would lace one way first vertically and then horizontally the next time. I'm not sure if I'm going to lace horizontally because I have those edges showing in my frame just showing because they're too small for the circle. So I'm going to lace the long end first and then I'm just going to have to see how it goes after that. And I want to do one last check of my positioning. Remember I didn't want any of that green showing but I do want some of this green showing and I want some of that red showing at the top there. So let's see, I think about there is good. I want to make sure because it's not going right to the edges of the circle, I want to make sure there's not more showing on one side than the other. I'm thinking I can probably fine tune that afterwards. So with my needle, I'm going to start at one end, doesn't matter which end I start. And just pull that thread through. Um, I don't want to pull it so tight that I pull the whole thing through. I'm just going to get rid of that little extra bit of bulk there that I don't need from my surged thread. Then I want to go underneath and I want to pick up some of the other side. So are we coming through from the bottom of the other end of the fabric and pulling that through? trying not to get tangled and caught every which way. Okay, so that's that end. And I'm, I might find soon that I need to go up a little bit further into this fabric if it gets pulled down too much, but we'll see. Now I'm gonna go back to the other side. So I'm taking my thread underneath and then I'm gonna pick up another bit from underneath this piece and I'm going to probably need a lot more thread and that's okay. So I'll go under again, pick up from this side, pull that taut. I'm not pulling anything really tightly at the moment, just seeing how it goes. Go underneath. All right, I've already gotten to the end of my thread. 
So basically, I'm going to have to cut, well, not the thread here, um, and then cut that and grab some more because I'm going the full length of the board underneath and behind, so I'm using quite a bit of thread. I'm just going to bury that end in the fabric and then get some more thread. It's a bit tricky because you do need a really long piece of thread, but if you have too much thread, it's going to tangle and that gets annoying. So I would rather cut it and redo it, even if it means that I have to rethread the needle each time. So I'm going to double up that cotton again. Okay, so I finished at this end, so I'm going to start at this end. And then go underneath. In a moment, I'll turn this over to show you how it actually looks on the underside. Don't want to turn it over just yet because otherwise I'll sort of lose my placement because my fabric might move. Okay. Back. And you know how far apart you put your stitches? It's just up to you. You have to see. You know, it depends on the individual fabric you're working with. If you start doing your stitches and then you're like, oh, I'm getting puckering of the fabric, well, you might need the stitches a little bit closer together so that there's less movement. Okay, so my last stitch was there. And... I need to refresh my thread once more, so I'll knot that off again. We can have a, a quick turnover at this point, just so that you can see. So I've got this sort of almost a zigzag going across, and you can see how that's going to hold each end to the board. So I'm going to continue doing that, and then we'll have a look at how it is when I've finished, and then I will decide whether I need to do the horizontal lacing as well. All my lacing's done. I can see that the piece has moved a little bit, but I haven't done any horizontal lashing, so it's okay. I'm gonna turn it over. And that's what it looks like now. If you can see that, um, I've got my cotton running up and down all the way across. And I'm just gonna try to reposition this a little bit if I can. All right, we'll see how it looks anyway. It's come out quite nice and flat, which is great. And I've just realized something silly I've done. This paper was supposed to be underneath here to make it white and um, it's a bit late. I might be able to slip it in there, but I'm going to see how it looks anyway in the frame first. If you make a mistake, first thing to do is try and work with it. If it doesn't work, then you think what you can do next. All right, so here I need to move my piece over a little bit because I've got this gap here and it's pretty obvious. So... needs to move this way well yeah I can see that anyway because there's more board on this side than there is on this side all right let's try let's try moving this over a little I feel like I'm going to break the cotton if I do it too much I mean, it's nice that the cotton's holding it there so well that it's hard to move. That's kind of what you want. You know, another thing I could have done is use like an adhesive, uh, an adhesive spray or something behind this to kind of ensure that it wouldn't move. But doing that means that later on you can't take it off the board and you know, swap it to the other side or if you want to do something different with the piece of fabric eventually. So um, something like a spray adhesive is more of a commitment. All right, how are we going now? Nope, we're still way, way too much. 
So I could actually move the fabric a little bit by doing some of that horizontal lacing. Um, so I could make it so that the fabric was being pulled a little bit more in this direction. That could work and that would ensure that it was flattened out as well. And then I wouldn't have that piece, that extra bit there. So I need to, yeah, need to move that over to about there. So I could either do the lacing or I can just try to position it like this. I think I want to try and position it like this. I want to see if I can get any of the white paper in there. Wrong way, that way. And then as I, yeah, that might work, you know. That might work. If I can position the board from this side so that I can actually see how it needs to be adjusted as I'm kind of pressing it onto there. No, I need to turn it over. I can't get it in. Let's see if we can get this done. <laughs> um, okay, so I need to actually turn it over that way so that the board fits properly where it's supposed to fit. Ah, oh, nice. That's actually gone in pretty, pretty well. Okay, so there's a tiny bit more on this side, but I think it's gonna work out. Okay, so that's sort of tightly in place now. I don't want anything to move. So I'm gonna put these little levers, these little metal prongs back in place so that everything is nice and tight. And once that's done, because of my lacing here and because of the prongs holding the backing board nice and steady, which it is, we should have no movement. Now all I have to do is find a place for this to go in my studio. At some stage I would really like to hang this frame on the wall but at the moment I don't have all of the back set up. It did come with one little hook, it was supposed to come with two hooks. So um, I'd have to find my own hooks to then hang the wire and then hang it on the wall. I'm sure I can make that happen at some stage. I think I'll get my husband onto that job. But I really love the way it looks right here, sitting on the ledge with a few other little art pieces and some of my handmade stuff around it. I'm really happy that I chose this particular piece of fabric because I think it just looks fantastic. And it's really given the fabric piece a new lease on life. Another cool thing is because it's not really directional, I could put it that way. I could put it that way. I could put it that way. I think I like this way or this way the best. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to let it sit here for a little bit and then see which way, which direction I like the best. Well, I hope this video inspired you to do something a little bit different with your weaving. And until next time, happy weaving. What do you call it? Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Let's see. Lacing. Lacing. Not lashing. Lacing. <laughs> All right.